Hi everyone, I'm Jess and I'm the content manager here at Course Report. Course Report is the resource for helping you find the right coding bootcamp for your needs. At Course Report, you can research the best coding bootcamps and technical skills bootcamps all over the world, find out which coding languages to learn, where to apply, and how to fund your own bootcamp experience. Today, I'm so happy to have Taylor Wofford joining us to talk about his coding bootcamp experience. Taylor is an App Academy graduate and now works as a software developer at Bark. So we're going to cover questions about why he chose App Academy. Um, so let's kick off there. Um, first of all, Taylor, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. What inspired you to launch your tech career? In 2020, I was I had been working as like a journalist for five years and then working in nonprofit for a few years. And I was kind of burnt out. Um, and I just happened to know a, a, like a number of close friends of mine worked at big tech companies. Um, and like, I was pretty close with these people and I was like, these people are pretty smart, but I don't think they're like leagues and bounds smarter than me. So could I do what they do? Maybe. Uh, so I asked them like, what are your recommendations? And they were like, yeah, you should do a boot camp." Um, so I did a little like pre pre-work before I applied for any, um, and they suggested app Academy because they'd like known some people who went there and it worked for them. Um, yeah, I was interested in why you chose app Academy too. Um, just because there's so many coding boot camps out there, so many online ones and also ones based in New York city. What set app Academy apart from the rest? Sure. Um, I mean, for one, the people that I knew and talked to recommended it, um, specifically, but for me, when like doing more research, um, a, the not paying anything until I had a job was a big part of it because I think it incentivizes them to make sure you find something. Um, and also just like the rigor was, was big for me. I wanted it to be hard, if that makes sense. Like I didn't want it to be too easy. Um, cause I wanted to actually learn things. Um, and at, at that time, like there wasn't a ton of, at least I didn't see, know that there were like a ton of online options. Mm -hmm. It being in person was really good for me. Cause that's like how I learn. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my cohort did go remote, like maybe two thirds of the way through because COVID started mm -hmm. popping. Um, but at least at the first, like two thirds, it was, it was, uh, in person, which, which I liked. Yeah. And as you mentioned, App Academy is, is known for those like rigorous standards, especially their admissions. Um, did you find it difficult to get into App Academy and like, how much did you have to prepare to just enroll? Um, I, I didn't find it terribly difficult to get in. I, I did do a fair amount of prep work though. Mm -hmm. So one of my friends recommended a book or like a series of books called Learn x language the hard way uh so i did i think i did python i did i read this through this book called learn python the hard way and like both as a way to make sure that i actually liked coding um and that i could like do it at least some on some level uh and so once i'd done that i knew that i at least could like code a little mm -hmm. bit um and so then the channel like that there i remember there being some sort of like questions or things when when I applied, but they weren't terribly difficult if you'd done some sort of prep work like that. Yeah. And overall, your experience at App Academy, did you find that their teaching style matched how you personally learn? Yeah, I, I did. Um, I'm definitely like a learn by doing type of person. So there was a lot of like lectures that I, you know, I, I liked that. Like, I think in the, at, at least when I was there, like the morning was lecture and the afternoon was work. Um, so that worked for me. I liked it quite a bit. And then there was also like a sort of spirit of like, we let you in here. So we trust you are smart enough to be able to figure this out if you try. Um, not that they like threw you in the deep end, really. Like you could always ask questions, but I do find that like that style of like, will give you the tools you need to be able to figure this out and not just tell you exactly how to do it mm -hmm. um, really worked well for me. And also it's just like how, what being a software engineer is like, so. And what kinds of projects did you end up building while you were at the boot camp? Um, my capstone project was, I think, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a clone of Slack circa like 2020. Um, so it had like a rails backend and a react front end and like a Postgres database and worked with like web sockets. I think it was like mm -hmm. looking back on it, I thought it was really complicated at the time. I mean, but looking back on it now, I, you know, it's not nothing, nothing too fancy. And then I built just like a plain JavaScript app that displays like motor vehicle collisions in New York city, which sounds pretty morbid, but I'm a big bicycle rider mm. and I, <laughs> I would like it if cars stopped trying to hit me. Um, 
So I, I did that. And then we had, there was like a group capstone type project that we did. This was during, it was during COVID. So it was like where to find toilet paper in your neighborhood. Mm. So when you graduated from App Academy in 2020, like what level did you feel like you were at? Um, were you like a junior level or did you feel like you're almost like into that mid-level um, tech experience? No, definitely a junior, mm. junior dev. Um, like capable of building small features and things like that, uh, capable of taking direction and learning. But like, if you'd plot me down and been like, build this really complicated app from scratch, I would have been lost. And overall, do you feel like you're still in touch with the App Academy community or other people who are in your cohort? Um, I'm I like in touch with some of them on LinkedIn. Like when I see they get a new job, I click the little like congratulations button or whatever. Yeah. Um, I saw one of my like group project people in Prospect Park the other day and we were like, oh, hey, we should hang out sometime and then never did. But like, you know, that's just <laughs> life. Um, yeah, I mean, like I mean, I'd say I'm in touch with them, like in a kind of a professional capacity, but like mm -hmm. I really, like hang out with them. And then I'm in the like they have a big Slack group that I'm in. I check in sometimes. Yeah. Did you find that most of the people in your cohort, they were there to make a career change into tech? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, either I, I, there were quite a few like me who were like a little bit older and were, had already had a career and were switching. And then some people who were kind of right out of school and mm -hmm. didn't really know what they wanted to do. So I thought this was something to try and like, it worked out for both types of people. So. What is your advice for any incoming boot campers on how to make the most of their App Academy experience? I don't know if they're still doing like a fully in-person thing, but I would say if they are, and that's how you learn, do that. I guess the thing that I found most useful about it was that it sort of taught me how to learn, if that makes sense. Like I can go, like a lot of your job as a software engineer is just figuring out stuff you don't already know and then implementing that. So like before bootcamp, I would not have been able to like look at documentation and figure out how to implement it. Mm -hmm. And now that's like a large part of my job. Mm -hmm. um, so like do, do that, I guess, uh, force yourself to like learn technologies that they're not necessarily teaching you, push yourself to try hard projects that are a little bit harder than like, you know, what'll just get you through the program. And I guess the other thing is that if you're in this for like a job, keep in mind that um, a big part of whether you get hired has not nothing to do with how good you are at coding. Um, I mean, like that's obviously a big part of it, but like one thing I noticed, I think in my cohort was just the people who had already had a career and were transitioning, had some of these like soft skills that the kids right out of college did not have. Mm -hmm. And so like try and, you know, it's, uh, I would, I would much rather hire someone who is like an okay coder, but is a good team member than someone who's a great coder and is really not. Yeah, no, that's such a good point. Those soft skills are are super important and any of that like previous experience is really important. Have you found that you're using any of your previous journalism sort of experience um, now on the job as a software developer? Um, my journalism experience. Uh, <laughs> or nonprofit, I, anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I'd say that I'd probably maybe a little bit more willing to speak up and ask like uncomfortable questions in mm -hmm. meetings. Um, cause that's like a, a large part of your job as a journalist. I was like a politics journalist. So that's mm. just like talk, a, asking powerful people questions they don't want to hear. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've been told by my manager that she likes the fact that I'm willing to sort of say things that other people are maybe a little bit too afraid to say, but yeah, I think that's a great skill. Definitely. Um, our course report readers are always wondering about career services at boot camps and what they're actually doing to prepare students for the tech job hunt. Um, what did App Academy do to get you ready for that first tech job? Yeah. So uh, as I recall, and it's been a little bit, one thing they did was like really focus on making sure your resume was good, mm -hmm. um, which I liked because like, I mean, I guess in the age of chat GPT, you can just ask it to write your resume these days. And I don't know if that's ethical or not, but that's something I would do because I freaking hate writing my resume. Yeah. Um, and then just like kind of went over it with you for every, not for every job you applied to, but like the ones you really wanted, they like would help you kind of personalize it. Um, and then for people who like felt they needed more of this, like they would do like soft skills training type things and like mock interviews, which was handy. Um, and then there was just like a huge co or like a huge group of graduates. So it's like if anyone 
there was a there was a decent chance that any company you were interviewing for someone at who had gone through the program now worked there so you could be like yeah we'll reach out to them and like ask what the interview process is like um and that's actually when i worked at bark like uh i didn't get the interview because i knew somebody who worked at app academy or who had gone to app academy now worked there but there was someone who had gone to app academy and now worked there and i contacted him and he was like, oh, yeah, this is what the technical interview, like, not here are the questions, but like, these are the sorts of things they're going to care about and like ask you. So you're three years out from graduating um, from App Academy. I, I'd love to know, like, what was your very first tech job that you landed after the boot camp and how you landed it? My like very first thing was this like contract JavaScript role for this consultancy down in D.C., where I was just like writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I only did that for like three months, which is fine because I didn't like it. Yeah. And then I got, I got like a full-time job working at um, another software consultancy that was based in Chicago. And so just like working on all kinds of different clients and that like mostly Rails backend stuff and React frontend stuff. Um, and I didn't get it through the school. I found it on like angel list or something like that mm -hmm. but yeah that was like my first real software job i'd say with the contract position is that something that you would suggest to other recent boot camp grads to like maybe go for contract positions and not just limit themselves to like a full-time role yeah i mean i i don't know like i haven't been job hunting lately mm -hmm. uh but like it, it does seem like the market is not great right now uh so like if that is something that is on the table for you then i don't see why you would say no to it like experience is experience if it pays you enough to live you know yeah um especially like if you're if they have some interesting stack that you could potentially get some experience in mm -hmm. when you were job interviewing after right after graduating from the boot camp did you find that employers were interested in either your app academy boot camp experience or like any of the projects you built there um i think i got a couple of comments about like my slack clone being cool mm. Um, I do think that like they had us build probably more complex projects than a lot of other boot camps were building at the time. Um, so people seemed kind of impressed by that. And when did you know that you were ready to move on to your next like tech position? Like you were in the contract position for a little bit. Sounds like you were, knew you were ready to move on to a, a salaried or a full-time role. When were you ready to move on to like the next um, full-time role after that one? It wasn't so much as like, oh, I'm ready and I'll start looking. I am like a big dog person and I saw Bark was hiring and I was like, I would love to work there. I can take my dog to work. Um, and it was kind of like a dream job for me. So I just applied and happened to get it. It wasn't like I was actively looking at the time. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so now that you're at Bark, uh, without giving any away any like company secrets, like what kinds of projects are you working on there? I work on a team that's like uh, almost fully back end. So it's like a big Rails monolith. Um, and my team specifically does a lot of work around like making sure customers get their orders and get them on time, like communicating with various like third party logistics companies like warehouses and UPS and USPS, those sorts of people. That's sort of what I work on on a day-to-day -day basis. And are you still using what you learned at App Academy now on the job three years later? Yeah, for sure. Because we are a big Rails monolith and App Academy was teaching Rails at the time. Um, so I definitely code in Ruby every day still. Hmm. What new things have you had to like add to your tech toolbox over these past three years? And I'd love to know if that includes any new AI tools. Uh, we have like an AI team, but I'm not on it. So I don't really mess with that at all. Um, we do like, we do, they do have, have us um, licenses for like VS codes, like little AI assistant mm -hmm. that you can use to code, but I haven't used it yet because I'm afraid that it's going to be better than me. It's going to damage my confidence. <laughs> uh, so I just don't do it. Um, so I still mostly work in Ruby on Rails. I'd say the stuff I've had to learn is like what they teach you in App Academy is how to build a Rails application, mm -hmm. which is like kind of a different beast than like how to manage a Rails application that like a million people use every day and just like kind of the trade-offs and decisions you have to make there. Uh, and like, you know, I, I think a lot of the things I've had to learn are like, I know how to do things like the right way, but like we never have time to do things the right way. So like, how do you make the best possible thing you can given time constraints and business constraints and things like that? Like, what do you need to actually test and what's okay to let slide? 
at my previous job, I worked in a React front end with TypeScript and we just learned JavaScript at App Academy. So I learned TypeScript. And then just like, I guess also various like analytics and monitoring tools. So like in mm -hmm. my current job, we use like uh, Sumo Logic to look at logs. And so like they have a proprietary kind of querying language that I had to learn. And looking back on your tech career so far, was App Academy worth it to you? And that can be defined however you're thinking of like worth it, whether that's like um, better quality of life or salary increase or work that you enjoy. Yeah, I, I don't think I would have been able to break into tech without doing it this way. I mean, yeah, I don't know, maybe I could have, but uh, it certainly worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I, yeah, I feel like that in that network, at least at the very beginning was super helpful in, in landing or at least like interviews and stuff. Um, and then there's also this just like huge number of people who I can reach out to who work at various companies if I ever wanted to interview there. And yeah, like I think I mentioned this earlier, I think they just kind of taught me how to teach myself stuff, which is probably the most useful thing. Well, that's a perfect place to wrap up this Q&A. Thank you so much for sharing your review of App Academy, Taylor. Um, and thanks so much to all of you for watching. What we're going to be posting a transcript of this video interview on the course report blog with contact information for App Academy, just in case you're inspired to apply for any of their upcoming cohorts. And in the meantime, follow course report on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're a bootcamp alumni, don't forget to post a review of your coding bootcamp experience on course report. Your review is a huge help to anyone thinking of getting into tech today. Mm -hmm.